necrophilia, which is defined as having sexual feelings or activities that involve dead bodies, is rightly considered one of the world's most gravious taboos. Serial killers have a tendency towards necrophilia as part of a larger spectrum of transgression behavior. Although a few individuals on this list are not guilty of murder, they are certainly guilty of disturbing corpses and other crimes. Either way, you have been warned. Number 10. Kaoru Kabarashi on November 17, 2004, Kaoru Kabarashi, a middle-aged newspaper delivery man, abducted seven-year-old Kaidi Kamarama and took her back to his home. There he sexually assaulted the girl before drowning her in his bathtub. Kobarashi then mutilated the girl's corpse, took pictures of her body with her own cell phone, and dumped her remains in a rural gutter. To taunt the girl's family, the man emailed the post-mortem pictures to the girl's mother and younger sister. When police began investigating cell phone records, they tracked an unknown number to the man's house, where they located a cell phone that contained a graphic image of the girl's murder. Kobarashi was promptly charged with the murder and related offenses. He was convicted and executed for his despicable act. Number 9. The Mochi Civilization from the 1st century AD to the 8th century AD, the Mochi ruled the northern coast of modern-day Peru from the Lapin River to the Nipin River. Described as the Greeks of the Andes, the Mochi are famous for their large pyramids. Inside these pyramids, Mochi artists painted murals dedicated to gods, religious practices, and dead Mochi leaders. In the 1980s, archaeologists began uncovering Mochi tombs shreds of poetry, and murals that dedicated rather disturbing scenes. Apparently, the Muchi had a predilection for painting scenes that showed human beings having intercourse with animals and corpses. Tenderness with the dead is especially common in Muchi artwork, leading some scholars to believe that the Muchi performed sexual rituals with the dead during and after human sacrifices. Number 8. Karen Greenlee about 90% of necrophilias are male, but on one exception is Carol Greenlee, a former apprentice a bomber at the Sacramento Memorial Lawn Mortuary. After her arrest in 1979, Greenlee, then 23, confessed to having had sexual conduct with 20 to 40 male corpses. Since necrophilia was not illegal in California, Greenlee was only charged with legally driving a horse and interfering with a burial. After she abducted the body of 33-year-old John Mumuri, Greenlee spent 11 months in jail and two years on probation. She also paid a fine of $255. Since gaining notoriety, Greenlee has become an unofficial spokesperson for necrophiliacs. She admits enjoying the smell of death and taking pleasure in attending the funerals of her so-called corpse lovers. Number 7. Anthony Marino in the fall of 2007, New York resident Anthony Marino, 24, made the news for all the wrong reasons. The former laboratory technician at the Holy Name Hospital in Teaneck, New Jersey, was arrested after a hospital security guard caught him doing something indecent with a 92-year-old female patient who had recently died. According to the security guard, he saw Marino sexually desecrating the woman's corpse. Less than a year after his arrest, Marino was sentenced to seven years in prison by a Bergen County court. However, However, during the trial, Marino accepted a plea argument with the prosecutors to undergo a mental examination and a psychological treatment in exchange for a possible reduced sentence. Number 6. Ginzo Kurita between 1948 and 1952, Genzo Kurito committed a shocking series of crimes that tended to focus on attacking mothers and daughters. When Kurito was caught in January 1952, he was charged with murdering a 24-year-old woman and her 63-year-old aunt. Kurito also stood accused of sexually violating the younger woman's corpse. After his arrest, Japanese investigators discovered that Kurito was a remorseless predator who had committed several murders. His most heinous action was the so-called Asen Koragashi incident. In October 1951, Kurito raped and murdered a 29-year-old mother of three. Afterward, he threw the woman's corpse and her three living children over the Asen Koragashi cliffs. Miraculously, one of the children survived. Kurito's other crimes included breaking into and entering the home of a sleeping mother and murdering the woman and raping her corpse. Kurito fled the scene, and throughout the whole ordeal, the woman's child slept beside her. For this crime and others, Kurito was executed beyond a hanging in 1959. Number 5. 
the Hickory Street 4. In January 2014, the Hickory Street 4, Elisa Massaro, Joshua Minor, Adam Landerman, and Bethany McKee lowered their acquaintances, Eric Glover and Terrence Rankins, to Massaro's apartment in Juliet, Illinois. There, the four robbed Glover and Rankins in his later taped confession. Minor claimed that the murder did not come into the picture until one of the two men tried to sexually assault Bethany. This claim was ultimately contradicted by the two girls who both testified that Miller and Landerman told them to leave the room before they strangled Glover and Rankins to death. But what happened next is truly grotesque. Elisa and Joshua apparently tried to have sex either on top or beside the murdered corpses. By 2015, Bethany, Joshua, and Adam had all been sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for their crimes. Elisa received 10 years in prison after agreeing to testify against her three co-defendants. Number 4. Victor Artisan Victor Artisan was an undertaker and grave digger in the small town of Muri in the French region known as Provence. For years, Victor engaged in many acts of necrophilia. When he was finally caught, he confessed to having sex with over 100 corpses that he had been entrusted to his care. Victor also admitted that he frequently dug up corpses and took them back to his humble home. When police examined his residence, they found a corpse of a three-year-old girl. Police also discovered that Victor slept next to the corpse and frequently performed sex acts on the girl's body. Elsewhere, Victor kept a skull of a 13-year-old girl, a skull that he constantly kissed and called My Bride. Throughout their investigation, Victor confided to the police that he always talked to the corpses in his home and treated them as if they were still alive. When they didn't respond, Victor would generally feel rejected and become despondent for a time. Number 3. Marcello Di and Andre. Marcello Di Andre, aka the vampire of Nideroy, earned his chilling nickname because he liked to drink the blood of his victims. Prior to becoming a serial killer, Marcello had been a teenager prostitute. After a suicide attempt, he was sent to a reform school. Throughout his time there and afterward, Marcello was regularly beaten many times. His worst beatings came at the hands of his relatives. At 23, Marcello tried to find some spiritual comfort, Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, a Pentecostal Christian denomination. Four times a week, nevertheless, in a nine-month period in 1991, Marcharala raped, murdered, and defiled the corpses of 14 young boys. Many were or had worked as prostitutes, while others were involved in Rio's underground drug market. Several of Marcharala's victims were also decapitated. Marcharala was apprehended in December 1991 and declared insane almost two years later. Number 2. Lam Kor Wong. In 1982, 27-year-old taxi driver Lam Kor Wong was also a terrifying sexual predator who murdered four women. 21-year-old Chang Fung Lan, 31-year-old Chang Wang Kit, 29-year-old Liang San Wang, and 17-year-old Liam Wang Sum before mutilating their bodies. This mutilation earned the man the nickname the Hong Kong Butcher. He was also known as the Rainy Night Butcher because he had a habit of murdering women on rainy days. After Lim's arrest, Hong Kong authorities learned that he had sexual intercourse with his victims' bodies and then removed their sexual organs and pickled them in Tupperware containers. Thus, Lim became known as the, the Jars Murderer. He is currently serving a life sentence. Number 1. Francois Brondrit Sergeant France Brodrit was a prophylic grave robber and necrophilia. On March 15, 1849, at 11.30 p.m., Francois was admitted to the Val de Grace Hospital in France, with gunshot wounds to his right side. Earlier, gravediggers at the Montparnasse Cemetery had concocted an elaborate trap to catch the infamous vampire of Montparnasse, a mysterious figure who was responsible for a rash of grave desecrations and mutilations. When new circulated that a French army sergeant was being treated for wounds that were consistent with the Montparnasse trap, Francois's surgeon, Dr. Marshall Calabi, received a full confession from his patient. Francois told his doctor that he had dug up dozens of male and female corpses before eviscerating them. Francois was convicted of 15 counts of grave desecration, but sentenced to only one year in prison. After receiving his sentence as a model prisoner, Francois committed suicide. Well, that's it for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, be sure to check out some of my others.